So welcome again to DevConf CZ 2021. I am Yuri Daniek and I'm the moderator. So now we are going to have the Fedora CI SIG and the meetup. I will now hide my video and leave you to it. I will be, I will be approving other people who want to join and uh, have a good time. Also the Discord link there uh, posted if anybody would be trying to use Discord for conversation, just very much. Yeah, I'm also adding the Everpad, which is currently empty, but uh, if uh, someone wants to add notes or um, like uh, topics there, so let's maybe use it to coordinate. Um, and, uh, and see how it goes. So, <laughs> Let me see how large is the audience. Okay, we have 17 people on in the room. And uh, my request is like to everyone in the room, if you want to participate, please uh, join in. We can give you a voice and we can uh, hear you talking. If you have uh, questions, please post them in the chat or in the Everpad or in Discord. And Miroslav, uh, can, can I ask you to watch after the Discord channel if you are of there sure. and, and see if there are the questions which we need to uh, discuss. So let's set the rules. The main, the, I think the top priority is to answer the questions from the audience right now. So if you have uh, something, don't hesitate to ask and uh, bring it in. So it's more of meetup for people who are uh, maybe new to the topic of the Fedora CI and, and, and like we, we want to share uh, as much as we can and use this interactive session to uh, help you understand what's going on. The second priority is like to talk about our current status and uh, to talk about our plans for the nearest future. And uh, we have in the room, uh, me, I'm Alexander Fedorova, I'm from Fedora CI SIG, but I also a CI engineer in Red Hat and I work on CI for Fedora, CentOS, Stream and RHEL. We have uh, Miroslav Vatkerti, he is maintaining the testing farm service, uh, in, uh, which is um, uh, providing the test as a service for all of our CI systems. In Miroslav, maybe you can, you, you want to introduce yourself more. <laughs> I think, yeah, we are creating a testing system as a service, which is basically shared between various users on our user, but then we have internal users in, in RHEL and also Packet is our other user. And then we are trying to integrate with, with more users, uh, with Fabian, we are trying to integrate with Zool, which didn't yet happen, but yeah, we are providing a testing system as a service. And yeah, I, I've worked for CI for a long time, involved in various pieces all around the place. And we also have Fabian, uh, who is uh, representing the Zool CI uh, and uh, providing a Zool CI as a service for Fedora. And uh, Fabian, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Alexandra. Yeah, I'm working in uh, the OpenStack uh, production chain team. So we are maintaining uh, a Zool deployment, uh, especially for uh, the RDO distribution. Uh, but we also uh, use the, the same system to provide CI for uh, for Fedora, for the disk especially. So this is more an additional system that uh, you can opt in if you want. Uh, well, I think that's, uh, yeah, for uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions so far or we are going to our topics, things, and I will just post them through into the Everpod right now, if I find it. So do we have anyone in the audience who is Fedora package maintainer and who works with the CI? Anyone in any of the chats which are connected to this session? Okay, awesome. We have people which are active. Uh, good to know. Okay, uh, let's me, uh, let me find the tabs because 
I'm completely lost right now. So the topics which we want to cover, yeah, I think we can uh, first maybe start with the Zool update because I know Fabian, you have a lot of uh, like new interesting stuff happening and there was just a uh, mail to Fedora Devel recently about the update. So can you give us a brief reminder how it's going? Yesterday we had uh, uh, a presentation about uh, the update. Uh, so for those uh, that wasn't there, I can uh, recap a bit. So mm -hmm. um, it's now easier to uh, to opt in for uh, the Fedora Zool CI uh, default jobs for this Git. So previously it was needed to uh, to do some settings in the this Git repository configuration on Pagure. Uh, it's no longer needed because now we use, uh, oh, so we trigger the jobs based on uh, Fedora messaging. So it's uh, it's really easier. And uh, even thanks to that, we are uh, even able to add um, uh, some bunch of uh, repositories. So we have like a, a tool that is able to to define which rep which this Git receives uh, pull request and uh, Thanks to that, we are able to say, okay, this this Git, we can add it to uh, to Zool because it will receive CI, so it makes sense. So uh, uh, we did that at uh, so a couple of times, and now we are, uh, uh, I think we are around 500 uh, this Git that we provide uh, jobs, and we uh, we uh, we think we will continue to. If there is like, uh, if people are happy about the CI we provide, and if it makes sense, we will. Uh, continue to add more this Git to uh, Fedora Zool CI. Uh, but it will also it will be also based on uh, our compute capacity. So for the moment, it's quite fine. Uh, it's not uh, really huge uh, uh, compute uh, needed, so we can add more. Uh, also, uh, so I think that's also good news. We now have uh, support for uh, GitLab uh, in Zool. So if uh, so move to Fedora CI uh, uh, to GitLab happen. Uh, it seems that we will be able to uh, to switch uh, quite easily to to GitLab because uh, the jobs are generic, are uh, platform independent. This is just a driver we will use uh, that we are going to switch from Pagure to to GitLab. Uh, yeah, so. Feel free to 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 ask if you have question. Uh, if not, I, I'll continue on uh, on the uh, other maybe videos. a comment here, like whether or not Fedora will switch to GitLab. I think it's still an open question. So, so like, like the more, the more support we have, the better, better because we we can also then consider using Zool for some kind of source Git workflows or maybe even send to a stream workflows. Uh, we will look into that. Uh, whether or not this is, will be the story for Fedora, we'll see. I know Neil is on the call, so uh, he probably <laughs> doesn't want to hear about Pagor deprecation, so let's not talk about it yet. <laughs> uh, by the way, Neil, do you want to join the call? If, if you do, let us know. <laughs> okay. <Hi. laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, um, I just uh, woke up, and I the first sentence I hear is GitLab, is Fedora <laughs> CI, which is GitLab. It's like, that's a depressing thing to wake up to. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, okay, um, let's, not, let's not go into yeah, that direction. But, right? um, <laughs> something that, uh, after hearing you guys talk about the, uh, you know, the update to Fedora CI, um, something that I was kind of interested in seeing is how how straightforward would this be to for other projects also leverage the same technology and the same you know practices and the same structure that you have put together for Fedora CI for other things because in OpenSUSE we've deployed a Packer instance code at OpenSUSE.org and we are trying to figure out what CI infrastructure we're going to use for it. Um, and there's been a general push to start pulling our packaging out of the custom version control system that 
our build the build system that SUSE uses has into Git so that people can work with it with Git version control and do things like fork it, branch it, test it, all that sort of stuff. And having this like one of the main advantages of the open SUSE build service is that it automatically does all this depth testing and depth checking and all that kind of stuff and not having that facility implemented somehow in CI in Git is a ma massive downgrade. And it sounds like what you guys have with the Zool CI for Fedora CI can actually do this. And so how, how easy it is so, to so replicate? Maybe uh, before uh, Fabian w would answer for the Zool part, I, I, w I want to clarify one thing like, uh, Zool CI, Fedora CI, is it the same thing or is it different things and, and, and where are we? Yeah. So Fedora CI SIG is a joint group uh, which is supposed to be a good place for all kinds of CI things. So if you, for example, tomorrow created your own CI engine and you want to try it and run it for Fedora, come to Fedora CI SIG and we will be happy to talk to you and like to see if we if you need some infrastructure help and so on to try your own CI solutions. So this is one direction where Fedora CI SIG is kind of place for experimenting with CI. Then there are two things which uh, we also do under the umbrella uh, like of, of the uh, Fedora CI SIG is like pull request testing for Fedora for both source and um, packages, for both normal packages and, and RPM packages, and, and uh, the gating. And tests also for this gate. Uh, yeah, and, and tests, uh, and, and also the gating, uh, the generic tests and the gating framework. And these two parts uh, operate differently. When, when we work with pull requests, this is the strong, uh, uh, presence of Zool because Zool knows how to handle pull requests. But when we talk about gating, there is the Jenkins and the Jenkins pipelines, which we run, which internally they use almost the same content, but there are two different subsystems. So when we talk about like porting Fedora CI work to some other places, we may consider pull request part, or we may consider gating part, and they're both interesting. <laughs> So now I will give it to Fabian to talk more maybe about uh, like possibility to apply Zool or OpenSUSE in a way. Yes. Um, so Zool is, uh, so the platform we use is called, uh, it's called Software Factory. Uh, inside Software Factory, we have uh, Zool and NotPool. So NotPool provide a test node, test a container for Zool to execute jobs on. Uh, so Zool is completely open source, not pool as well. It's developed by the open dev uh, community. Uh, they provide uh, a container to deploy uh, Zool and not pool. Uh, so this is one way to deploy uh, Zool and not pool using the container provided by the open dev community, but also you can use uh, the package we provide through the software factory distribution. Or uh, now we have a package uh, inside Fedora for Zool and NotPool. So this is also a way to deploy it. Uh, then after we have the jobs uh, we have uh, created for, uh, for Fedora that are, uh, I think, generic. So there is a repository uh, hosted on Piker.io that is called Zool Distro Jobs. That is a, a, a library of uh, jobs designed for Zool. So this is essentially uh, um, Ansible playbooks and role. So this can be reused really easily. So if there is a, a automation and role, so role to build on uh, in Koji, to build SRPM, uh, to call uh, copper to run build on copper. So different kind of things that can be reused uh, as Zool jobs. And then after we have Zool jobs that use this library of roles that is called Zool distro job. So this can, this I think is quite generic. And uh, there is, I don't know how uh, in OpenSUSE, uh, how it's working actually, if there is a Koji or not, but if there is, this is just, well, okay. But if there was, it was just a matter of change the settings. And, uh, but yeah, after Zool 
it can be uh, so it's just a matter of uh, designing your own jobs. Uh, it's going to be uh, on civil playbooks and all. So, think. So in, yeah, yeah, I feel like oh, there there could be a point of collaboration on this uh, district jobs uh, setup because. Um, uh, yes, we have Koji and Copper, but uh, I think since it's Ansible playbook and uh, playbook and stuff, uh, then uh, you can kind of generalize it and uh, replace maybe some parts with like call build system to give me an RPM package, which may be different real implementation oh, for different uh, settings. So uh, there is some path here for to, to research, I think. And and as I said, like uh, Zool is very powerful when it comes to uh, working with Git for JSON with pull request workflow. Uh, so Pagor is supported, GitLab is supported. I think uh, Garrett, Garrett is supported, even though you don't like Garrett, I know. <laughs> uh, and I think GitHub, uh, what, what about GitHub? Do you have a GitHub driver as well? In Zool, yes, yes, yes. It is used currently oh, yeah. by diverse so, projects. So, so it's it's really cool from from that point of view when when you need a close integration of testing with pull requests and so on. So, I'm really really a huge fan of this. <laughs> so uh, from it, it so yeah, who likes Garrett here? Basically, only Alexandra. Uh, and <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to denigrate Garrett. It has its place. It's better than email, and that part I'm 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 okay with. Um, that said, uh, I, I'm actually quite excited that Zool can handle multiple drivers at the same time, because in the OpenSUSE land, we've only recently started with code.opensuse.org. We have a lot of stuff that's on GitHub, and, and there is obviously some path where we want to transition projects from there, but we may always have projects that are on GitHub for various reasons and whatnot, um, multiple namespaces, that sort of thing. Um, what we what we want to actually have is a lot of like what you what you're doing with the Fedora CI stuff where people can take a thing, a code project or a package or whatever, and then plug that into the distribution test cycle and see how that fits before ever having to release it into the distribution in the first place. Now we have some of this already with the pipeline with the OpenSUSE build service with OpenQA and some of the staging workflows and stuff, but that requires first attempting to submit in the first place and that's just kind of a crappy workflow if you are trying to make something that you aren't even sure you want to submit yet but you want to test it as if it's going to go into the distribution and a lot of what you guys are talking about seems to make it possible to even have that pre-stage testing possible like nothing has to be submitted before it, um, into the distribution but it can still be tested against as if it was um, like I've seen this with some of the PR stuff that's been done in, in Fedora with, uh, with some Fedora packages where somebody saves a pull request and it tests it and it runs CI tests as if it's being plugged into the distribution, basically pre-stage, pre-stage testing as if it's going in. And that's the kind of yeah. thing that I, I'm really interested in having because I think that's quite valuable and being able to maybe leverage the same kind of test stuff that you guys are doing, uh, would be super cool. Um, maybe the the thing about Koji versus OBS, I don't know exactly how the Koji test actually works, but if it's possible, we can generalize it and write an OBS back. And that might even be useful for me uh, in the general case, because some stuff, even in the Fedora, if I'm running on Pegger IO, I may want to actually test on both Fedora and OpenSUSE and being able to have those same kinds of things would be super cool. I think we need to talk more here about this um, pre-stage and post-stage testing because the current issue which we have w when using Kodri is that uh, we cannot do pre-stage testing on a build artifact uh, and then merge that artifact without rebuilding. You know, like w when you work on the source level as a normal package developer, uh, uh, code developer of a application on GitHub, right? You have a commit, you test it, and then you merge it. You don't change uh, what you tested. Like you, you merge it as is the code in, in the master branch. 
But when you work with packages, what, what we do currently, like you create a pull request, and then we create a scratch build out of that pull request. And then we test with scratch build. But what we cannot do is like, once we test it with scratch build to merge it into the main Fedora Rawhide because scratch builds are not mergeable. So what we do is uh, we discard the scratch build, which was just tested. We merge stuff, we built in totally new binary package in the different build root environment. And then we test it again because we may have broken all the things while we were uh, like testing, testing it. And then this package goes into the gating. Then that's why we like run additional set of gating tests on that package and maybe on a build group of packages. And then we get it through uh, to, to the final Fedora Rawhide. So this kind of scratch build thing is really br breaks the flow of testing of a cl cleaner testing for, for this whole this whole system, right? So in uh, when, when you try to adapt these uh, solutions to other build systems, as you say, it may be better in OBS, but I also really think that we should review how the Koji works with uh, NVRs and yeah, the build IDs in there. Then we will have a cleaner uh, workflow on, on the Fedora CI side as well. In, in the what you're talking about, the reason why I, I said that sort of thing, I was slipping into how OBS tends to handle this, which is every build gets a unique, uh, every build gets an identifier, but also every build is checksummed. And so if something is identical both times, it doesn't care. It's not gonna, it doesn't trigger rebuild cycles for no particular reason. And so it, it tends to be somewhat intelligent about this. So if you build an overlay, for example, with a bunch of packages put together, and then that overlay is tested to be good and you merge it, um, unless the project is configured to rebuild everything all willy-nilly, it won't. So, so, so that you tend to be able to reuse the same artifact as it's being merged in. We currently have the kind of overlay notion by a dynamic site tech thing, which is technically like the pull request to on, on the level of binary packages, right? So w when we do gating for multi-package builds, we actually create a site tag, populate it with needed packages, test it as a thing. And then the site tag, we can merge without rebuilding it again, right? We will merge it as, as, a, as, a, as a thing. Uh, this is a promising direction, I think, for Fedora CI, if we learn how to update site tags easily on change without the need of version bumps of everything and, and this thing, then we can bring a site tag in. And then we, uh, instead of creating scratch builds for every pull request, we will create site tag for every pull request. And then we will be doing fast forward, merge, fast forward merges on, on this thing without, without rebuilds. And we can close the gap between uh, pull request testing and post merge testing, right? That's absolutely a fantastic uh, path forward. Uh, I think what Pierre's got the um, the auto release stuff that makes it so that um, the release field is dynamically generated based on the history of Koji builds. And if what you're talking about is what you want to get towards, I think that sounds like a path to help make that become a thing, um, unless I'm misunderstanding something here. Yeah, if, if we can do an NVR uh, ID for Koji without uh, update it, in, increment it every time we build a new package in Koji without changing the source code, then we can kind of, yeah, you rebase the pull request, you get all the new builds and uh, you don't need to manually bump uh release versions or whatever you just you just update the package site tech is updated and then if it fails by some reason it's a wrong order you again you build it properly and then you merge it so i think uh, this is a uh, what, what i'm worried about pierre's change is that it's uh, kind of bundles a lot of stuff because there is a change log uh, generation I, uh, there is a build id thing and and there is uh, like it feels like it can be separate, but we can discuss it more on Fedora Devel, I guess. 
So I, mean, I personally, I'm personally only really interested in the auto release bumping stuff. I don't particularly care for the changelog thing, but some people think the changelog thing is a good idea, so it's in there. But I just really want the auto release stuff. I don't really care about anything else. Um, the auto release stuff is the is 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 the golden egg for me, and I want that to make it through. And I want us to be eventually be at a point where that's just the default way we do things, because I've seen how how much less of a burden that is. Because in OpenSUSE, I'm spoiled. That's how it works. You don't get to control the release field. OBS rewrites it for you. You can say what you want. It's going to ignore it. Uh, and it sets its own. Uh, I, I, would, I would be careful here because, you know, um, I think release field is needed. Because we have uh, three moving parts, right? We have a moving uh, part for sources. And we version this part by the version of the, uh, the version field, right? This is a, our... Uh, sources attract uh, by the version field. Then we have spec file and patches and everything which is in this Git repo. We've, we've versioned this part with uh, release field right now. And then the third part, which is uh, also moving, is the build environment. And we currently don't version this part. So what you say is like, move release uh, field to, to track the build environment, not the spec file. But I'd say we, we need a release field to track a spec file. And if I change the spec file, it should be bump of a release field. But I need a third number, which will be tracking my built environment, which most likely will be timestamp or some just ID or whatever, because it's hard to version the built environment. But it should be identifier. And then I need all three. I need a version, I need a release, and I need a build ID. You see, because they have three different purposes. This is complicated, but uh, uh, is that I like not having to think about what that number needs to be. <laughs> yeah. As long as it always <laughs> goes up, I don't care. Uh, and and that's. That's kind of nice in the in the when I'm working in the OpenSUSE stuff because I just set the value to zero and I just don't care how it goes up and it makes it makes not, uh, having to make changes to the packages a lot easier. I don't have to think about whether I got the number wrong because a lot of people get that number wrong because they're manually doing it. Like I think Podman got two epoch bumps because because they messed up the how to handle snapshots. And that was not great. <laughs> okay, uh, I suggest we kind of make a short pause here, and I want to check uh, any questions from the audience regarding Fedora CI in general, not just what we talked uh, right now. Or uh, should we move forward with some? Uh, we have three more topics we may want to talk. Uh, so. If I, I don't see questions in the current chat, I don't know what's about Discord and so on. So I will then go on with one more topic from the list. Let's go with Fedora CI repos on GitHub and why it's now easier to add new pipelines. I mean, the topic I added, but I want to ask Michal to talk about it. <laughs> okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I think Alexandra or maybe Miro, Alexandra uh, mentioned that we in Federal CIV run Jenkins, uh, which is, I mean, Jenkins is fine, but it has its problems. But one nice feature uh, in Jenkins is that uh, it can, like, you can point Jenkins to a, a GitHub organization, for example, or GitLab organization, it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, not Pagure. Pagure is not supported. Uh, and uh, it can like monitor uh, new uh, repositories. And if it if it finds Jenkins file instance, automatically create that job for you and it, it will start running and you can, you can play with it. You can also like open pull requests and it will also discover those pull requests. And if, if the pull request is not removing the Jenkins file, it will basically create another job uh, in that Jenkins instance for you, so we can play with it, you know, and try different things and basically uh, iterate quickly without 
needs to you know having Jenkins locally or anything like that. So basically, if you if you would like to add new tests uh, to Fedora CI, you can uh, clone any of the repositories that we have there. Um, I, I'm making it like sound super simple, but it's more complicated, of course. But uh, basically, you clone. It's simple. No, it's you, super you, simple. Yeah, you you clone any of the, the repositories, make your changes. If you, uh, ideally, your test is uh, in a container, so you you know update uh, the container reference that we have there. Uh, you update the YAML file that is there, uh, FMF file, and you just. Uh, let Jenkins to you know create the, the job for you and let it run on on Fedora updates uh, as people create them. Uh, yeah, it's not like uh, in reality. Of course, it's not all that simple, uh, but I think it's a nice feature. Uh, and I'm not um, sure if it. Mm -hmm. What I may, maybe wanted to add is like previously we had uh, Jenkins. Uh, libraries uh, where I think we had even hierarchy of like free Jenkins uh, groovy libraries depending on each other which provided some functions which we then used in Jenkins pipeline and I think it was really hard for a newcomer who just come to Fedora CI to understand where exactly do you need to make a change to like improve the pipeline or improve logging or or do do anything uh, nicer to to this this infrastructure so what, what I think important in this upgrade, which we did uh, by moving to GitLab, we, we not just moved the code, we also refactored the approach and the structure is now nicer. So we have one uh, still uh, common Groovy library, which is also there on GitLab, which provides functions like map my build to my Koji ID or something, or, or, or render my CI message in a readable form, so, so th things like that. And we have in the pipelines, we, we kind of have a nicer structure now because we have metadata of the pipeline, some helpful function, which is uh, mostly wrapped in, 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 in this groovy function. And then you just have a call for a script which is you usually called Python script or you, you call bash script or whatever script. And this script does the magic of testing. So if you want to bring your new CI pipeline to our system, you basically need to copy paste the Jenkins part and write your bash script or Python script to, to handle the testing logic. And you can, if you uh, know the TMT, you can actually write it TMT request. Uh, um, for, so you don't even run tests locally, you ask testing farm to, to run this test for you. So I hope that this uh, make it more accessible. And so when, when you read these gating results and you read the logs and you see like, I want to make this log look nicer, you just really can go to GitHub, send a pull request and, and change it in, in, in terms of minutes introduce some abstraction there uh, basically people don't need to care about like how the results will be reported for example and whether they will like show up in body uh, later it's all like it's all hidden in that library uh, and if you copy paste that Jenkins file it will be there um, and yeah like Alexandra said you modify some metadata at the very beginning there is a like uh, map uh, key values uh, at the beginning, so the pipeline actually knows uh, like few de details about about your test, uh, some name and test type and stuff like that. But other, yeah, it's but at the end of the day, it's still groovy. So, <laughs> so never never mind. It's, it's groovy, which you can copy paste. I, I I don't mind writing in any language as as soon as I can copy paste, and and I find that current pipelines are possible to copy paste that's 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 a key <laughs> property okay any questions comments from anyone in the room i see miroslav uh you maybe uh, can talk more about the testing farm what, what testing farm does for uh the jenkins pipelines which we run yeah yeah sure 
Uh, sorry, seems I need to close my door because uh, I hope you don't hear any sounds. A anyway, so okay. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, the testing form is like a service that 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 we are creating and it's used as the backend for running tests. And lately, we also implemented this nice HTML page with uh, XUnit uh, with reports. And currently, like Michal in Fedora CI pipelines, we like testing forms output is an XUnit. That's what I'm trying to say. The standard format for outputting tests and this XUnit is uh, translated into HTML, uh, and that should be quite a reasonable outcome of the testing. And people should be able to get to it from the bot interface directly with one click. Maybe I can show it. I'm not sure if we show this because this is basically new from the last year, right? We didn't have this before. If I go to bot, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Let me, yeah, seems it's slow. I will also load here. Maybe I can show GitHub first. So on GitHub, GitHub, uh, if I look on TMT project, which has a lot of TMT tests, so it's like a, uh, yeah, good for presentations. Uh, if I look at the pull requests here, I also should mention that we uh, support not only Fedora, but also uh, CentOS of seven plus even even CentOS six will be supported for some cases even though it's L. Um, so here you can see the results from the testing form so this is the packet integration so if i look at the Apple results now we have with this one click you can get a, into a reasonable html output of the tests it looks like this it's it's expanded by default i need to fix that but basically this is what you get as a test output so these are all the plans that have been run there on CentOS 8 and you should be fairly easy uh, should be able to discover like what what were the results. Of course, here everything passes. So th this is the first experience. The second one is from Bodhi, where I can again show some package. I don't know which one. Uh, yeah, let me try again. TMT maybe. So the experience from Bodhi. If I look at some raw height builds, so in the tab of the automated tests, there should be here a link. Yeah, and this is a little bit that the, that this is an old build, so we removed the builds for for uh, after some time. So this is two months old. So those logs are gone actually here. This package is old, but yeah. Let me try something else. For Podman, you can expect build every day at least. So yeah, but I'm not, <laughs> it's a yeah. good candidate. <laughs> it's a good candidate. I'm not sure if the tests are not broken there. I can try to check. Yeah, those are cockpit. That is also a good candidate. <laughs> a day ago. Let me try this. Right, so this is the experience that from Bodhi with one click you get, and these tests were waived here. Uh, so you get an, also, this is also an HTML output, but this is directly in Jenkins, but it's generated from the same XUnit as testing form provides, right? And you can get with one click to the, to the locks from the cockpit test suite. Yeah, so this is the current experience that we have at least a fairly, a fairly simple, but already usable. Uh, yeah, and there were some errors here. So this is the things that I wanted to show that we didn't have last year. Um, yeah, and uh, also uh, Alexandra mentioned that all the generic tests are now also written in TMT, and also that gives us quite a nice uh, HTML output, right? So RPM inspect, RPM deplint, and installability all have fairly nice output for investigation. Maybe I should have also shown that those were the other tests in the body interface. Yeah, this one is not here. I'm not sure why. Right, so these tests, RPM Dublin installability, those also have the same experience. You have the, the installability test, which tries to install the packages, try to upgrade, remove, update. Right, so very basic, very same experience in this case. And same goes with RPM inspect, for example. Right, so you have here all the RPM inspect checks that you can see that ABI did have here a regression from the last one. Okay, uh, just a sneak peek. Uh -huh. in, in the future, we would like to away from Jenkins, I think. Uh, although I think yeah. it's like it's okay-ish if 
you know, if it shows the test results, uh, it's worse if there is some infrastructure error, like debugging those is like currently, I think it's, it's not possible for like, for normal, uh, normal humans, not, like not CI people. Uh, th there is no chance yes. currently. But, so. so we have at least improved the error messages there lately. So we, we try to return some reasonable error, but yeah, this is still something that our operations team will need to do to monitor the errors. Currently we are fighting their bug that is on row height and causes that some TMT tests just hang <laughs> in prepare step. So I, that is some, something that is causing quite a lot of errors. Uh, but yeah, otherwise things look fairly stable. So uh, maybe I, I missed that part completely. I was wondering, uh, Zool can run TMT tests. As no, well no, I didn't operate. finish it. So I, we talked with Fabian before the Christmas, but I have a task for it. So we currently decided that we will directly from Zool jobs run it via testing farm. So currently that's how we want to have it. So we integrate it also with testing farm in those ca that case. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. If that would be problematic, then we can directly do the runner because TMT has a runner, so we can do it directly from the zoo jobs. But currently the agreement with Fabian is that we will, we will basically use the API. So he has a, he has an API key on his side, on Zool's side safely saved there, and we will be using that to contact the testing farm to do the testing for us. Is it for like, uh... Uh, these Git tests that, that are uh, defined in the Just repo or also for generic pipelines? I, I guess for generic pipelines, uh, Zool CI has its own implementation for so for them. I, I'm not sure. The, they don't have their, the test that you have created, like installability, RPM depleting. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe RPM depleting is run. So that's questionable. We can run it again via testing form with the same way because maybe, basically that is just using as API. I'm free for discussion there. So that should also work running it via testing farm the same way as Fedora CI does it, or we can move it and have it running directly on Zool. So in this, in this case, with using the service, Zool will be basically just a wrapper, team wrapper. It will be not doing the real heavy lifting that will be delegated to testing farm. But I'm free for discussion there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we need we need probably to rediscuss about that. Uh, more I, I thought about it, uh, maybe uh, I think could be a better idea to use uh, directly the test nodes that are provided by uh, node pool. So, because I fear that uh, we are going to put uh, twice uh, the load to uh, to testing farm uh, for uh, this git that uh, you are already running jobs. If we run job as well, we will run the TMT jobs on testing farm twice and it's not going to be to be good so so currently uh, we use fedora aws hello duncan on the call <laughs> so really like uh, currently like we definitely are like uh, I, I don't have numbers i hope for for the next year i will have some nice numbers i have a lot of capacity around us also testing farm hub is created that we want to be able to like somehow move the workloads between infrastructure so currently like in upstream we have only aws but we are planning to have uh, uh, OpenShift cluster with QWIRT support. So that will be something that we can also use. So we will, we already also from Red Hat, we'll have some infrastructure available that we can use. So I wouldn't be afraid currently of that, that, that stuff. But yeah, it's all discussable. I'm, thinking, I'm fine. I'm thinking that we, we maybe want to deduplicate indeed the runs. So like when we create a pull request, we uh, need to run this Git test only once. And if Zool can cover the TMT based disgit tests, we probably need to disable the Jenkins job, uh, which we maintain for pull requests to do the same thing. So uh, as soon as you get a certain way of running uh, TMT driven tests on sure. Zool, we yes. just onboard all packages to that to Zool yeah. pipelines and switch it off for pull requests and we'll keep it in gating. Yeah, that was, that was a question. Uh, I, I don't, don't know where by, by Tom Steller that he has, he had this question yesterday. I think it was on the Zool presentation. I now remember that he was asking that, that, that why is there this duplicity? Because it's like for the users, a little bit confusing. So yeah, once we have TMT support there for Zool, definitely, uh, this, uh, this Git pipeline is fine. Of course, for the test namespace, I think we will keep that because we have also the, this Git pull requests over test namespace. So this is something that the QEs are using, that they are sharing the test from RHEL to Fedora in the this Git test namespace. And there we also want to have a CI. So maybe that part will be, will be there still. I don't know. 
but 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 F F Fabian, do, do you have also maybe plans for Vitas namespace, or what do you think about that? Maybe he doesn't even know that there is a test namespace. That's usually the, <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how. It goes. So yeah, so that's very. So, this is a yeah yeah. I I think I know what it is. Uh, in SRC uh, Fedora Project dot uh, org, we have like a slash test. Yeah, exactly. I think by yes, okay. So we we have. Uh, so let me find it. Um, it's going to be quick. I think. Yeah, I guess it is no problem. So if, if Zool will also support test namespace, we can just like completely do the Fedora CI pipeline. I think that's completely fine. Yes, for test test Python, uh, we we have CI on that uh, repository, so we support it, and we are able to run a functional test. Is TI test if any from that repository? Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, it, it it feels like it actually makes even more sense to do it through Zool because then you can create dependent patches to test into RPM and try to test them together eventually a, 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 as a group. So, so I would be interested in in de developing in that direction so that. Uh, instead of running two different systems, we, we all converge to Zool. So my ideal vision <coughs> of a Fedora CI on pull requests is like Zool only, uh, with just in farm in the backend, but uh, driven through Zool, then we can have across uh, different projects uh, and tests and namespaces, we can, we can have a common idea of a, of a testing. Wonder what do we need to do? That? <laughs> How much work it will take? So, uh, Fabian, if if I currently uh, say that my uh, one pull request depends on the other, then Zool will already handle that, right? So, for example, I submit a change to one RPM as a pull request, like Libacy Linux, and by, then I submit it change to the DNF, uh, which depends on the pull request to uh, Linux. So will the world test uh, these packages together already or not yet? Yes, yes, it does. Um, so there, with Zool, there is a system of uh, dependencies between the uh, uh, changes. So it can be pull request or uh, uh, Girit review. Uh, so for a given change, you can uh, set uh, um, multiple dependencies to other changes. So on Pagur, it's going to be dependencies uh, on different uh, this git pull request, not merge yet. And then uh, we are going to, to to try to test that together. So Zool facilitates a lot the work. Uh, so in the Ansible inventory, we have all the detail and we can have our jobs that react uh, to that details, dependency details. Uh, so what we have implemented today is a uh, dependency support for uh, uh, runtime dependency. So uh, mm -hmm. if you have uh, a, pack, a pull request on a package that depends on another pull request on another package, you will have both build in the test node. So you are going to test the instability, for instance, or the STI test with the dependent build into the same node. Um, but as of now, unfortunately, we don't have the support for uh, the build requirement, the build dependency, uh, mainly because we are using uh, Koji and we are using Scratch build. And we cannot add a dependent build, a dependent repository we have created previously uh, into the mock root of the Scratch build into Koji. So this is really something that uh, prevents us to, to provide the support. So we are uh, looking to use maybe Copper so, or maybe a local mock build on the test node. So it's not clear yet, or maybe side tag, but it depends about uh, the API support into Koji to build, to create side tag, destroy side tag, because we are going that to create exists. a lot of side tags. So yes, that, that not exists. Exists. Yeah, the side tags look, look. So there is a problem though. But with the side tags, we have this N NVR problem, well, right? No, side tags, NVR problem. As long as you are it, even more you can, use some, you can create side tags and then not do real builds with them. So you can use side tags, populate them, configure them, and do scratch builds using them if you wanted to. 
But there is a problem with side tags. And that problem is you don't have a good way to configure uh, repos outside of the nested hierarchy for your side tags. So say you want to overlay another repository as an external source and plug that in together into your side tag. That is not easily possible in Koji. So you, you can only do a side tag that directly nests from tags that already exist and are already configured. If you want to have like a combination of, you know, let's say Fedora 34 build root and maybe the ELN thing and maybe like OpenStack or whatever, like just throwing some random thing in the air, like pulling all those together into a side tag is not straightforward. And I, I'm not even sure it's even possible. Um, so there's no wide comp, there's no way to, um, what is it? Stitch together multiple multiple things into into a single side tag. But if you're just directly saying, I want to build off of F33 and I want to scratch build a bunch of things from there, you can do that. Um, so so side tags may actually help because you can also do things like configure extra mock flags in a Koji build. So because you can configure those per tag, and so you can do you can test for all the different architectures. You can produce build artifacts that way um, through that, but it isn't as flexible uh, as I think it should be because it is missing the ability to do like disparate composition. Like side tags don't have all the functionality of a normal tag in Koji, um, or at least I haven't seen that functionality exposed. Working okay. through uh, the copper just... because I think that is exactly the system that is used for this. So instead of yeah, copper actually has all this functionality that we're that I'm I'm suggesting. Like you can pull multiple projects in, you can do like a wide integration very right. easily. Uh, the only feature that copper is missing is the ability to configure macros. Mm -hmm. um, and it used to have it, and then they ripped it out. Mm -hmm. And I would like them to put it back because <laughs> it's very helpful to be able yeah. to define macros. Uh, but that is the corner case a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. it's a less of a corner case if when you're, you're doing talking CI. About if we're talking about scratch builds, the copper seem to be a better uh, idea than uh, the uh, regular Koji side mm. tag. It's kind of more flexible and it scales. I think it scales better right now because it's also on Amazon. Thank you. It should get better. So like like two days ago there were like three K in the queue. So I we had we have we were waiting a little bit, but yeah, they know about it. So it's also on Amazon. Okay, I want to follow up on the question from the chat from the Andre because uh we indeed discussed a lot of things, uh and uh it may be not clear where like the packager gets into this whole topic. So if you're just starting to look into how to test uh, your Fedora packages, so the recommended way is to go and define uh, TMT tests in your repository. And we have a doc which I'm posting in here. Uh, so TMT test is uh, you put a file in the disk git repository, which says uh, run this script basically, and then uh, like or run this test framework or, or so on. There are more features to this, but like basically it's just a file which says run this thing uh, to test my stuff. Then uh, if you have TMT tests, then automatically you will get your test and uh, gating test pipelines ru running this test on every bot he update or on every raw hide update of your package. So you will get it. You don't need to do anything else. For Zool support and nicer pull request testing, you would need to add additional step right now, I think, um, so that you onboard your package to Zool. But Fabian, if I understand correctly, you are now like collecting uh, the old packages which have used pull request in a in the past and just bulk adding them to the Zool pipelines, right? Yes, this is what uh, we are currently doing. We uh, are trying to to verify, mm -hmm. to, to check the repositories that uh, that had uh, at least uh, two pull request updates in the last, uh, so 
last time we did, it was uh, last week, and uh, we checked for the last three months. So, and we added around uh, mm -hmm. two, uh, 200 uh, this Git. So, but there is quite a lot this, this Git in Fedora. So, it's, I think we cannot handle everything. And uh, so, yeah. So, but, but you, as a packager, so, you can opt uh, in if you want. This is uh, just we try to, to have more adoption. So, so we, we attach uh, <laughs> jobs to, to this Git. Uh, uh, but well, yeah. I see that possible improvement to the docs we have. We, we need some doc that's like not focused on the tool, but more like I'm a packager, I'm on tasks. Where are my yeah. free steps to achieve that? And, and we, we need this page in, in Fedora docs to, to make it more clear. Docs are a little bit also outdated. We need, there needs to be some work there. Maybe it would be nice to coordinate it somehow. I tried to get the Fedora Q, QA guys to help there, but it didn't work out. So we will need to do it. Currently, it's, uh, I think there is also some older information there that is not relevant anymore. Fabian, what do you think of moving this uh, Zool part of the doc also to Fedora CI docs? Because currently I think Zool part is in the wiki, uh, but we, we try to put CI docs also on the CI docs site. So m what do you think of moving that wiki page to ASCII doc format? I don't know. Uh, where it is more convenient for you, I'd okay. be happy to us there. Well, it, it's... It's helpful for it's, everyone else because it, right now everything is kind of scattered and pulling it into, and for a while now, Alexandra and a few others have been saying, you know, we have all the documentation on the Fedora CI docs page, which doesn't have all the documentation. And so it would be probably a good idea to just kind of centralize all that into the ASCII doc. I have my feelings about ASCII doc, but like it, it, putting it all in that place makes it so... It's easily searchable, easily located, and and people can easily reference it. And changes that are made to it, you know, the team can actually see and make sure that they're good um, and, and keep it coherent. Because like one of the problems with the wiki one is that it, it loses its coherency over time uh, because either it, they rot or they're, uh, other people just randomly updated with their own things and it just, it starts making a lot less sense over time, and yeah, the uh, it, it, it's quite helpful to just have it in one place that is managed directly by the team who actually understands what's going on. That's the reason why the packaging guidelines moved because nobody could find anything, and now we can find it all. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, we follow that. We, we just uh, really need to put some additional effort to make it more usable. So we have a repository already. It's an ASCII doc. Uh, we have a pipeline which updates it and, and on the doc side. So what we need is we need to migrate the Zool part to this repository. And then Fabian, you would be able to work with this repository on, on your own as well. Like we, we need to add you the rights to it. And, uh, and we need to create a better entry point for the new packager to understand the situation and the difference between different uh, between CI systems, between gating and pull request testing, and where to start. It makes sense to dedicate one day maybe some meetup or some dojo or whatever that we would update and look at the docs together, because I think that would help. I, I would definitely join. Good idea. The only question is when. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and if you think about it, it's like really hard times. Okay. Uh, Sometimes. Maybe, yeah, maybe in March, in end of March, we can we can do something like this. Yeah. By the way, we have Fedora CI SIG and Fedora CI SIG meetings, which are biweekly things, and we recently we have. I don't know if Jim Bear is on the call. He is usually trying to organize them and 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 lead them. Uh, and and he added the notification from Fedora Calendar to CI mailing list, so we were now don't miss them, and we we actually know when it's, when it's going to happen. 
and uh, yeah, we we probably and I asked him also to send meeting notes to Fedora's CI mail list when the meeting happens, so we kind of make it more visible. Also, not 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 to just direct participants, but to everyone. Uh, in and it will be in 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 the mailing list logs. Uh, what about what is the start Fedora project I/O actually, Fabian? I I'm not sure I uh, what it is. I need to check. Yeah. It's new to me. I don't yeah. know that this is project that oh, <laughs> yes. this is a... oh. Well, right. what 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 is um... I/O. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know because, because I'm working okay. with software factory.io so all the time and uh, it stick to me so I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so okay. Fedora documentation should already uh, it's it's Fedora magazine. So Fedora mm -hmm. documentation should already kind of take you to the landing page for all this stuff. Um but if you make a magazine blog post it'll show up on there. Uh I don't know what else you would want to put there. Is there the CI space isn't, isn't linked from the main documentation? So if I click on the main federal documentation, how do I get to CI? I don't see it there. How, how to edit there? I guess it's not. Like, yeah. It's not landing page yet. So probably we need to just change the landing page to add a, add a on docs. Yeah. Okay. Where's my pod? I have already action items, <laughs> many of them. So action item one, add Fedora CI docs to landing page. A landing page. Action item two, uh, add Zool to Fedora CI docs. Fedora CI docs. Action three is to Add uh, where to start a doc to to CI docs, and maybe uh, do a how do you, how is called Fedora CI docs uh, works hackathon. Be have a hipster name for it. Okay. <laughs> What what else we talked about? Uh, yeah, we still need TMT support in Zool somehow. Figure it out. These are ongoing tasks. Any other notes? I'm not sure how, how much time we have. We have 15 more minutes, right? I think so. I don't know how much time you have. So this is way longer than everything else I've been in today and yesterday. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, ma magazine article. That's that's what. We, oh, we yeah, actually, about. we're our right. time is up. Magazine article. It's seven. Uh, it's supposed. It it was supposed to end four minutes ago. <laughs> Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, five minutes over warning, so not, <laughs> not before. But after. Then I I I started with action items right on time, right? So so, so I got uh, six action items. Uh, we need to know, we know what to do next. Uh, I, I will probably close with uh, we have Fedora CI SIG, we have Fedora CI SIG meetings, mailing lists, uh, we have documentation, and we welcome everyone to help us and like to come and talk to us. I would like to say that now we have a yes, and Fedora we CI now have free. a break, one hour or so. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go over time, it's perfectly fine. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, th thank you for give, giving us the time, but I, I will I probably think I think this is a good good moment to stop. Otherwise, yes, we'll give Alexandra like, like 20 action items, and, and that's probably not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we, we already have enough. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and thank you for the group. Thank you, Neil, for providing us the uh, conversation uh, topics. So, yeah. Uh, see you on our. Talk, uh, talks and other meetups then enjoy with defcon bye
Enjoy. Bye, y'all.